Hi, grade nines. Um, today we're going to be looking at models of atomic structure. So this is sort of the, the historical um, the historical models of the atom that, that scientists went through until they arrived at the modern view now. So what we would know now as the model of the atom. Uh, so we're going to start with Dalton here. So Dalton, uh, and you can take notes on the sheet that I gave you all here. Um, so Dalton's uh, model is called the billiard ball model. Um, now, billiard ball, people often don't know what billiards are. Billiards is, is like pool, just a little bit different. So that's why we put pool balls here. So Dalton uh, th thought, his research showed him that the atom is indestructible. So indestructible, you can't break it apart, that it was solid and indivisible. So you cannot divide it into different pieces. So he would, he would have said that there was no subatomic particles and that it was just this dense ball like this here. Uh, so in your notes, I want you to write down this stuff here, and then I want you to draw a picture. You can draw just uh, of, oops, the different balls uh, like that, uh, and those were the different atoms according to Dalton. This is what it looked like. Now Thompson's model, a little bit later in 1897, actually what was the first one? 1803, so it took quite a while to, uh, to improve on this model. So in 1897, Thompson, uh, Thompson is the scientist who came up with what is known as the raisin bun or plum pudding model. Um, now plum pudding was used because uh, Thompson was a British scientist and in Britain people would eat plum pudding. So this is a picture of plum pudding here. Uh, we don't really, no, not many people eat that here, but you've got raisins and plums and different, different fruits, dried fruits in there, and they're inside of the bun. Now, North Americans, we've kind of changed it and called the raisin bun, so it's like having a bun with some raisins in it. So this was the introduction of electrons. So these are negative charges, electrons. Uh, so what Thompson proposed was that an atom is a positive ball of electricity. Um, so the whole ball would be all positive and then you would have these little uh, negative particles embedded in it. And these negative particles are the electrons here. So the main atom is all positive and then just little pieces of negative throughout. So you can do a little sketch here. Just pause the video and do your sketches and make sure you write down the notes here. Good. Now, from Thompson, we went into Rutherford's model. Uh, Rutherford's model is known as the nuclear model. Um, so he proposed that the nucleus, oh, that's funny, you can't really see it on this diagram. There's the nucleus there. Oh, never mind, hold on here. Got to erase it. There we go. I like using this little stylus. Uh, this is my nucleus here. So he proposed that the nucleus it was a dense positive core, and that's where that uh, and that contained what's known as protons. And we'll talk more about this in in the next class. Um, so the protons are the positively charged particles, and that's where they live in the nucleus there. And then he proposed that electrons are scattered around the nucleus in an electron cloud. So his model is pretty good. It's pretty close to the real model here. Um, so you can do a sketch. Uh, so you're gonna draw your circular atom and then draw your positive nucleus in the middle and then draw the electrons swirling around in a cloud. Now, how Rutherford came across this is known as the gold foil experiment. Now, if the positives, uh, if you look here, this diagram here, if this, is, this would be Thompson's model here, if we thought that, that the positives were sort of all the way out throughout, um, what happened was he put, he had a gold foil here. So these are alpha particles. So they were decaying. And so radioactive alpha particles were being shot through um, the gold. And so if the, if it was, if the positives were all spread out like this, um, the alpha particles should have been able to go right through. But what happened was that some of the particles were bounced back. And you see that in the second diagram here. So some of the particles, as you can see, get shot backwards or deflected off. And so that led Rutherford, and but others didn't. Others did go straight through. So this led Rutherford to believe that there was a dense 
core. So one section that had most of the positives in it and the positives were the thing that were repelling or deflecting the alpha particles. And your textbook actually has um, uh, some explanations on that. So you can read up more if you'd like on that. Now, then we moved into Bohr's model. So Niels Bohr, 1913, his model is known as the planetary model. So in this one, electrons move in orbitals around the nucleus. So again, inside the nucleus is going to be the protons. And then the electrons moved around in what's known as orbitals or shells. Um, and so the order for filling the orbitals is 288. So what that means is the first shell here can only hold two electrons, and then the second one can hold up to eight, the third one up to eight, etc. cetera. Uh, so you can do a little sketch here, uh, the diagram in your notes, okay, of the Bohr model. Uh, lastly, we have the quantum model. So this is what we use today, and this was discovered in the 1920s. Uh, it's known as the wave model. Uh, electrons move randomly in an electron cloud called orbitals. Um, so similar to the Bohr model, except instead of having, you know, defined rings like the Bohr model, uh, this is electron clouds. And, and the whole point of this is that we don't really know for sure the exact location of the electrons. Uh, they move around a fair bit into the clouds here. So make sure you copy that stuff down there and you can do a sketch. Uh, again, you want to have your, your atom, draw your nucleus, and then you've just got your clouds going around full of the electrons. Now the assignment for this, um, it's in your textbook, so it's on page 155, and you're going to do questions 1 to 5 and 13. So you do have to have this finished for tomorrow, uh, which is next class, and we're going to correct it in class together. So make sure you're keeping up and finishing the assignments. Thank you.